Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. We are in your imagination. <laughs> no, I think we are in our dream. It's our dream come true to be here and to have you and your guest here today. 1907 All Original Opera House. It's in, located in Staples, downtown Main Street, Minnesota. It's the heart of the highway. Um, and um, Staples today is revitalizing for us, but uh, for Chris and I, we are now again opening for you, and, and uh, so you are located in, to us, our dream. In 2002, um, I, my, I went to an uh, appointment, I had a, a lump, and I thought, well, I better go in and get this checked, so I told no one, and when I got out of that appointment, they diagnosed me with cancer. So that was the first like shock that every family that goes through this, I'm sure, remembers that first day. So I had to get a cell phone battery, so I went and got a cell phone battery and walked across the street, and as I stepped off the curb, I got hit by a truck. And that truck drug me 10 feet, and I'm laying there thinking, is this it? And I think that's probably the most dramatic moment for people when they get diagnosed, is like, it, I think you get to that point where there has to be something bigger. And when I got home, it was kind of a blessing because everybody focused on my foot. And my twin brother took it the hardest. Um, and so for the next six months, while well, my sister and my parents just surrounded my son and I, who was only two and a half years old at the time, processing cancer like so many families do, he went up and down the highway looking for an extreme home. And what happened is he stumbled upon Mark Bounds, uh, Rainbow Realty, and he says, well, we have one newly listed for 11 days. And he said, it has a little music hall over there. And my twin walked over here to a one family owned building, the Batcher family. And he walked up and literally climbed over this room, mounds of storage, up these stairwells, and pulled open the door and a 100 year old light panel and flipped up the lights and you are seeing what you see today. That night I got home from chemo and he talked to me, I drove to his home, and he talked till five o'clock in the morning. We drove the next day, and um, it was without any, with me even seeing it, that we purchased it that day. A um, hundred and four years ago, Charles Batcher built over 200 homes here in this town. He was an architect, and if these walls could talk, we've heard it. Um, we hired an uh, architect writer to have him come and unveil that history. That's never been done for this building. But when we uncovered Charles Batcher's history here for Staples for ourselves, basically, um, he had four businesses on the main floor that all faced Fifth Street. And it all happened because of the train, the depot that was here and is still here. All the trains turned here. And tens of thousands of people were standing stationary, milling around on these streets at any given time. This is the traveler's rest. So when all these famous plays came to town, there was over four opera houses in this, in this town, hotels, restaurants. So we're revitalizing today in hopes that the traveler rest again. But the train is, a, uh, this building housed the train conductor's offices, for example. And all these famous plays, the women wore their long dresses and fur coats here, and the other ones, they wore their blue jeans. So when Mary Roberts Reinhardt, who was a very famous playwright from New York, when her famous plays, like the black cat that she invented, the sayings about the black cat, when her plays, The Seven Days, the famous comedy that played 500 weeks in, on Broadway came here, and when John Philip Sousa came here, when those famous plays that were unveiled in the historic documents, I guess that to me is the story of the history of what happened here. And it goes on and on, which is why we're giving tours today to tell the story. I guess the thing that impresses me the most about Mrs. Batcher is the fact that when I read stories about her three-year-old boy that sat up in the balcony and the courage that it took her raising a family under such you know, heavy construction and how patient the Batchers were to do it right. This building is so overbuilt structurally. The architects and the tours that we have given thousands of people that have walked the rafters and the basements and have said that this man and woman when they did it, they did it right. And I guess our story with the cancer was we were told you have one year. And when you're told you have one year, what kind of business plan do you make? Um, well, Louie Anderson helped with that. 
Lou Anderson walks in. He makes the journey up the steps to see our magical house here. And he says, I want to be your first show. Where our local band director, quite famous at that, he says, uh, I said, will you be our first show and perform the John Philip Sousa musical here, our orchestra he was putting together. So he was our first show. But I think, um, so I guess that's what prompted us to do, you know, that first restoration was to call up Susan Roth and ask her what can we do and still as this document was making its process through the registry and she says the first thing you do not want to do is touch the walls. So when our, when our travelers come in, they gasp, they, they, they step back and they say it's still here. The National Register of Historic Places said don't touch it. We have never seen one. What you have found is, an, is something that usually we get a property like yours, we have to tear through layers, find a photograph, and attempt to recreate what we are looking at. And they stamped it, National Register of Historic Places. And I guess that is, to me, our, our biggest victory. And so when you talk about restoration, I like to talk about reverberation. Because to Chris and I, Frost Twins, we want to tell the world, and we want to take our opera hall to the world. And our story is just one of the many thousands that we've heard. When people walk in this magical building, it literally inspires them to go back home and dream again. And I guess that's the story here. Um, we want to webcam every show. We want to webcam every tour. We want to webcam from the time they walk in to the time they go. And it's rock and roll, 50s and blues, and bring your dancing shoes. And so when these folks leave our Midwest for the winter time, and they, they don't know what's going on, we want them to be able to log on and capture their granddaughter on the stage singing or the live music that's playing and their grandma dancing. And to be able to never let go of that captured moment so that someday it's also recorded. We are gonna have a restaurant here. We do have a bar, it's called the Boxcar Bar, and we are going to have a bed and breakfast, and there's going to be so much more. So a business plan, it is important. And I have learned from my twin and from my son that perhaps it should be longer than one year. But I don't think I would ever take back living as if you only had one. Chris and I have hosted all over 60 shows here, proms and uh, wedding dances, but our, probably our favorite shows have been the Staples Historic Band, but also the Mickey Rooney Show and Louie Anderson and Scott Hansen. And here's some of the signatures from those shows. But back in 1907, when the plays came through town, it was very popular back in the day for the entertainers that came off the trains to sign backdrops wherever they performed. Okay, well, 100 years ago, this is where all the folks came to the Opera Hall. The women wore their long dresses and fur coats to this one, and um, there was four opera houses in Staples, so this is the Grand Opera House, which is why we're calling it the Grand Opera House, located in the Badger Block. So right here is the 100-year-old ticket booth. So for 100 years ago, this is where they bought their tickets for the shows. But because of the train 100 years ago, all these conductors that came off the train and had to rest at the Traveler's Rest, they um, reserved rooms up here. So these rooms have doorways lining the interiors of them, boom, 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 all the way down on two floors. We have a catering uh, kitchen set up for when caterers, licensed caterers come in to, pre to pre uh, present their catered meals, but we will have a restaurant on the main floor. Our future plans are for, we have a blueprint drawn for a bed and breakfast. So on the second floor, we'll be housing a bed and breakfast. Every tour we've given, all the entertainers who have come, including you know Mickey Rooney and his wife, they all want to stay oh, here. Yeah. I mean, that like, on the stage, there's two doorways, and they're sealed up in, the, in here now. But the, the entertainers, when they performed here, they came off the stage into this suite. So this is the magic suite. This is on the document. This is where all the magic happened. So when Louis Anderson, Mickey Rooney, and Lamont Cranston performed here, so this is where all the entertainers stayed with all of us, you know, we want to for sure record where we've been. And I think why I'm excited about Staples today is that they do recognize where they've been. But when I see an effort 
uh, cumulative effort of where they want to go, I know that Chris and I have, have had the right vision, and that is to live your life as if you only have one year, and then embrace the environment that you, the choices that you've made with your dreams, and then go out and take this uh, restoration and reverberate it throughout the whole world with the technologies that our young children are bringing, like my son has with this internet and uh, the Wi-Fi capabilities that we have now um, to be able to share these talented people and these travelers that come by these beautiful um, 30 mile an hour traffic opportunities that we still have in our town and uh, see our history uh, unfold. And I guess that's what Chris and I are doing today is that we're opening up for you. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.